Hey all, AK here. I've teamed up with Vespers to bring all of you some free new tutorials and free production tools. If we haven't connected before, I'm a music producer based in San Francisco. I'm into glitchy, funky bass music, and I learned to do it all from quality sites and resources like vespers.ca. You can learn more about me on my website, aktunes.com, or check out my trainer profile back at vespers.ca. Don't forget to click this link and grab the free download so you can follow along with this tutorial. All right, let's get to the good stuff. Today I'm going to talk about using dynamic effects that react to other instruments in your track. For my example, I'm going to do something fairly basic. We're going to distort this pad, but we're going to have the pad's distortion react to our drums. So I'll drop in a distortion on my pad and dial in the highest amount of distortion I'm comfortable with for this application. And I'm intentionally not going to mess with the dry wet knob because that's the knob we're going to be moving to the drums. So the next step is to bring in an envelope follower, which is the key to making all of this work. I can't take credit for writing this Max for Live device because it's more complicated than I know how to make. But the basic purpose of the envelope follower is to take incoming audio and turn that into a waveform that can express modulation. I'm pretty sure the envelope follower comes with Max for Live Essentials, so you probably already have it on your machine. I did, however, develop a creative way of routing this effect to achieve interesting results. And you can download this rack as part of this video's free device. Basically, my envelope follower rack consists of two chains. One chain has clean audio coming through with no effects. The second chain is muted, but has a compressor first with the blue headphones turned on, the side chain enabled, and then an envelope follower. What I can do with the sidechain function enabled is that I can choose the track that I want to send to the envelope follower. Remember, this allows me to describe incoming audio as modulation. So I'll choose the drums track. Then I can map the envelope follower back to my distortion so that the incoming volume of the drums affects the dry wet of the distortion on the pad. But this is configured all wrong because I don't want the distortion to grow as the drums get louder. I want the opposite, for it to sort of fill the void when the drums get quieter. So once I've set up this routing, I can use the envelope follower settings and min-max attributes to better create the result that I'm going for. As well, we can always retune the original effect patch or add some modulation to one of the effect parameters to create even more movement. Remember, this envelope follower is describing how the volume of the drums gets interpreted as modulation. And being able to see the knob wiggle as you edit the envelope is really helpful, I think. I hope you think so too. That's all for this video. If this was useful to you guys, do us the favor of liking this video so we can bring you more. Also, make sure you click this link to grab a free download of all the files we built in this tutorial. 
Vespers.ca has a huge library of production courses and free tools. Synth patches, samples, templates, racks, productivity tools, interviews with world-class producers. It's an amazing resource for you to level up your production skills and find your chops with legit quality resources. So come and join us back at the site and stay tuned for more freebies. See you next time.